Breakfast with Spaniels with Dr. Judy Morgan. Teresa Carpenter, you win! So I hope everybody had a great weekend. We did. On Friday, we got one of our bags of corn um, <laughs> peeled and in the freezer. <clears throat> uh, we still have to do the second today. So we've got about 50 pounds in the freezer and another 50 to go. And then yesterday, we picked 10 pounds of blueberries and 5 pounds of blackberries. And uh, they're halfway through the freezing process. i got to get them bagged up today. So... Lots of busy stuff going on, and we babysat yesterday, so in addition to going picking, so I didn't get a lot done, but anyway. Um, so, morning Bonnie Hirschman, happy birthday. Um, it was yesterday, but we'll wish her happy birthday today. Uh, so, um, I saw somebody posted this morning about, uh, they were asking about the best harness for degenerative myelopathy dog and of course it's a large 80 pound dog um so i thought i'd talk about dm i don't have I, I looked i don't have any good blogs written on this so i'll get one done and put on the website so that we have more information there for people um but dm or and D, when when you abbreviate things on facebook you really confuse people when you just use initials so some, this person posted about dm and somebody said diabetes mellitus no degenerative myelopathy so it could stand for either one of those things and human physicians and nurses are going to be thinking more along the diabetes uh, with that so uh, but degenerative myelopathy is a devastating disease my sister has had a couple of corgis that have had dm and um it's it is a degenerative disease just what the name says and basically it's degeneration of the nerves and the spinal cord the myelin sheath on those nerves and so they stop firing and they stop uh, giving input to the muscles and it starts at the back end of the dog and works its way forward so um, and it's it's very tricky to diagnose but the first symptoms that you would notice would be maybe the dog is a little unsteady and swaying in the back end when they're standing a little bit of trouble getting up you might confuse it with arthritis and the because this usually is seen in middle-aged to older dogs uh, thinking that there's some arthritis going on certainly would not be a, a, a bad way to be thinking um, so these dogs besides being a little swaying in the back end they might be a little lower in the back end you notice that they're just not standing up as tall as they used to uh, and then you'll notice that they start knuckling over on their back feet. So instead of standing on the top of their paws like they should, you'll, you'll notice that they're starting to do this or they're tripping in the back a lot. Or you'll notice that particularly the two middle nails are starting to get worn from dragging on the pavement. And a lot of times you can, um, you can, uh, hear this when you walk dogs on pavement you'll if you listen closely you'll hear that scuffing in the back end yeah it, it is a lot like a wobbler dog that we would see with the Danes or the Dobermans uh, their problem is a neck problem um, but the symptoms a lot of times start in the back end as well uh, some Dobermans will see a little more front end stuff where they're uh, knuckling in the front or dropping down in the front um, 
So uh, with the, the DM, it can occur in almost any breed, believe it or not. We're actually seeing it in Cavaliers and Pugs and, and smaller breeds, and it didn't used to be that way. It used to be something that we would only think of with German Shepherds. I remember treating an Irish Setter with it years ago, and, uh, and then I had a Bernese as well. And I, I looked at the owners and said, you're crazy. Those dogs don't even get this. Well, yes, they can. Uh, at... My sister's dogs are corgis, and this is a big problem in the, the corgi community. Um, and so what happens is it starts in the back end, and uh, you'll see the scuffing, you'll see the back end problems occurring, and they'll get to the point where the back end is not working at all, so they can't get themselves up, they can't walk. And so this person was saying, okay, I need a harness for that back end. The problem is the, the disease is going to progress eventually, it will affect the front end as well. It can affect all the muscles of the body, so it kind of works its way forward. Um, so the harnesses that I like the best for these guys are the help them up harnesses. Don't get the knockoffs, get the real help them up. Uh, and the great thing about the help them up is there's a front end and a back end harness. And you need to do all the measurements on their website to actually figure out what size your dog needs. So my mom's uh, standard schnauzer, Shotzi, when she was having a lot of trouble getting around, we bought her a help em up harness and she actually had a different size for the front end than she had for the back end. Because um, when we did all the measurements, she didn't neatly fall into, oh, she's overall a medium or a large, I forget what she ended up with. Uh, but it is a great harness and it has these wonderful little suitcase handles, one over the butt and one over the shoulders, uh, so that it makes it very easy for you to help these dogs. Uh, there is a genetic test for this. Your cat has it. Interesting. Uh, there is a genetic test for this, and we think that this is a genetic mutation that causes it. It's, um, as far as we know, it's not painful. It's not uh, really an inflammatory problem as much as it is a degenerative problem. So overall, these pets seem to be more weak than painful. Um, there's not a whole lot of good treatment out there. Uh, Dr. Roger Clemens, C-L-E-M-M-O-N-S, did a lot of research on this back about 20 years ago. And so you can, uh, you can Google that uh, or put that in your search engine, whichever one you're using, um, and put in Dr. Roger Clemens, and uh, he's a neurologist down in Florida, does a lot of acupuncture, teaches at the Chi Institute. Um, <clears throat> he did a lot of research and came up with a lot of different vitamin protocols one of the things that was recommended, which is on our website, is the NAC, which is N-acetylcysteine, which is a great antioxidant. <clears throat> um, and so that can be helpful for some of these dogs. But really what you want to do is keep these dogs moving as much as possible. And you want to keep them moving on really good tactile surfaces. So slippery surfaces, slippery floors, bad news for these guys. Uh, what you want to do is get them out on grass, on gravel, on uh, rough surfaces so that they have a little more tactile sensation. And you want to keep the muscles as strong as possible. This is that, that old use it or lose it thing. So we want to keep these guys moving. Physical therapy, uh, underwater treadmill, acupuncture, particularly electroacupuncture, uh, chiropractic work, all those things are really helpful to keep these guys going longer and longer. <clears throat> um, so it's not that easy to diagnose. You can do the genetic testing, uh, but some dogs test positive on the genetic testing and don't come down with DM. Um, but it's not something that shows up on x-ray. It's not something that shows up on MRI. Now, certainly you need to do x-rays and do other diagnostics because you want to know, do I also have hip dysplasia going on? Do I also have spondylitis or arthritis of the spine going on? Because you don't want to ignore that. You want to be treating that as well if it's needed. Good morning, California. You're up early. <laughs> um, so... Uh, it, it's something where you, you will end up doing a lot of diagnostics trying to find what the problem is. And you may see perfectly clean x-rays. You may see a perfectly clean MRI. Um, it's sort of a diagnosis of rule out. And certainly you can have the genetic testing done. And it's not that expensive. I forget where it gets sent to, but it's, uh, it's something that certainly... Good morning, Joyce. Uh, it's certainly something that will show up 
on a, a, a search and when I do the blog I'll put a link in for that but um, so it can be seen in a lot of pets now um, once you get past the stage of using a harness you can use a cart for these guys you'll start out with a two-wheeled cart in the back end Eddie's wheels in Massachusetts I think makes the best carts available that's where we had our cart made for Charlie I love them um, but uh, oh, the other harness that I like besides Help Em Up, I really do like the Help Em Up, but Ruffwear, R-U-F-F, uh, they make a really nice front and rear harness uh, connection as well. So that would be the second one that I would, <clears throat> that I would look at if you can't get a Help Em Up. Uh, the Ruffwares are very nice. And then uh, these guys eventually will end up with the back end in a cart, and then you can move to a four-wheeled cart uh, once the front end stops working as well. Uh, it takes, takes, um, it takes a lot to care for these animals because eventually they will become fecal and urinary incontinent as well because as those nerves in the back end start to fail, uh, we'll start to lose control over that as well. Um, Michelle Allen says they have a DM dog right now. Yeah, but Michelle, I can just about guarantee your DM dog is going to uh, PT probably three times a week and getting all kinds of stuff done. So um, it, it really, do cats get this? Well, uh, somebody said that their cat has it. I never diagnosed it in a cat. Um, cats are, are amazing creatures. Uh, they keep their mobility, even with severe arthritis, cats uh, remain much more mobile than dogs. And maybe it's just because they're a, a lighter weight body overall. But uh, here's somebody says they used walking wheels. They were wonderful to help fit dogs and customer service. Good. Uh, what area of the country are they in? Um, your Olivia loved her wheels too. She was so happy. Our Charlie, uh, the wheels made a huge difference. Um, I'm thinking of refitting her, his cart for Shayna pretty soon because, uh, she's definitely mobility challenged at this point. So, um, this, this is a tough disease, uh, tough tough to deal with because there really is no great treatment. Uh, it's really about keeping them going as long as possible. Um, so if you can find somebody who can do electroacupuncture, if you can get physical therapy, and if you can't get that stuff done, if you're in an area where you don't have that available, then it's really critical that you exercise that dog as much as possible. Keep them moving as much as possible. Really try to increase those sensations and you may end up having to uh, get boots for them. Um, I can't remember the boots that we got for Shotzi, but there's a lot of different boots out there. But if they're dragging those back feet and they're starting to ulcerate or abrade the nails down too far, uh, you do need to get them some boots. And um, there are a lot of other um, uh, really good physical therapy pieces of equipment that can be very helpful for these dogs. There is a, there's a rubber band type thing that uh, actually goes from the front end um, to the back feet to help uh, keep them from knuckling uh, under. So lots and lots of information. I'll try to get some information into a blog for you guys. But uh, life expectancy after diagnosis, it's all over the place. I've had, you know, some people who have been really, really uh, on top of getting therapy for their animals. Uh, some of these guys will go a couple of years. And then I've seen others where it's progressed very quickly. And within six months, they're completely down. Uh, so it really just depends. My sister's dogs lived quite a long time uh, after their diagnosis, and they were they were in carts uh, for quite a while. I've got pictures of her dogs running around our farm in their carts. It didn't really slow them down. So, okay, you remember me getting the boots, and you have it written down in notes for future reference. <laughs> I can just imagine the notebooks that you guys have. Um, you lost your corgi to DM. Yeah, Eddie's wheels are wonderful. Uh, they are, uh, and they fit a lot of dogs with this, unfortunately. Roughwear has great boots, yeah. Um, Susie's helped her with her scratching. Okay, I got to get to the farm. Got to clean the chicken coop. I got to get blueberries, raspberries, and corn frozen. I, it's, I, you name it. We got a lot to do. And they're working on our back patio, putting the cypress wood up. Very cool stuff going on. We should be in our house in seven to eight weeks. Yay. Yay, yay.
going on a year with your Dalmatian with this. Yeah. Tough disease. Really tough disease. Alright, everybody have a great day!